I confessed my guilt and shame. I sold my land and possessions and I joined the third order of Saint Francis as a hermit. And I cried, Lord, have mercy upon me and grant that I remain no longer in this world. I have a very mixed background. <laughs> And um, this always leaves me in some weird space of which I, myself, I see it as some kind of uh, liminal space. So space in between or always a transitional space from one context to another, from one kind of way of thinking or doing things to another and I had to accept that this is my uh, this is the norm for me right so I will never you know probably uh, be able to define what I'm doing or what my background is or what you know what my context is by you know one discipline or one one term this uh, new project the exhibition which is called uh, the strongest muscle in the human body is the tongue. My, let's say, first attempt to put writing in space. So I, I was thinking how to write in an exhibition space. I think that writing indeed, it uh, uh, somehow intuitively, organically, it takes uh, more and more space in my practice. Uh, I don't consider myself a writer. <laughs> But uh, I like to be this as um, Clarice Lispector, um, Brazilian writer, whom I also include in, in, in my work. Uh, as she says, she sticks to being an amateur writer, because then you write not out of uh, commitment to the scene or to the, to the reader or to the publisher or whomever, but uh, you write out of your own kind of yeah need and necessity and you write as much as you need to. And here follows a brief history of my life as a writer. <laughs> this new piece, uh, it's called um, I Write While Disappearing. It's... Uh, you can see it as a discussion, a conversation between me and 14 uh, women writers uh, who lived through, well, different times, but mostly 20th and 21st century, most of them. And so I was um, um, using uh, interviews with them, uh, taken mostly from television, different, again, periods and uh, different countries and um, I was uh, editing them together into taking fragments where they are talking quite personally actually, sharing quite intimate moments of their lives and observations, mostly about what does it mean to be a woman and a writer. And then my own voice and my own kind of um, trajectory or personal history pierces through and uh, discuss it with them. It was very painful for me to write because although I was obsessed and, uh, and, and completely grabbed by the writing of the play, by the working of the play, it was agony to write it. Is there any, any thread that connects all these figures, all the historical figures you're interested in? Yeah, me. It's like, <laughs> they are all... Um, <clears throat> I see them as my, I speak through, through them in a way uh, what I would like to say, right? So I'm interested in finding whose, uh, whose tongues I can speak through. Um, I like uh, to imagine that 
my own thoughts, they are not necessarily, they don't belong to me, but that they are uh, coming from some lineage, uh, from some kind of tradition, even if I don't know it yet. So I always can find who or trace back the kind of archaeology of, of my own thinking. My work here is the translation of a 17th century um, English writer and public figure, uh, Margaret Cavendish. Uh, she didn't have uh, any formal education because she was a woman. And uh, at the same time, she was uh, a privileged woman. So she was married to a very important uh, duke of the time. And in their house, there were always a kind of it was a space for uh, people from uh, philosophical circles, the scientists, the artists, the writers of the time to gather and discuss the most actual ideas. And so she combines uh, the natural philosophy, literature, um, sciences and, and, and uh, whatever discourses she had access to, she combines into a kind of really wild um, uh, piece uh, which doesn't really follow um, any rules. But today we can read her as, uh, as a kind of proto-feminist um, writer and um, she has some intuitions for, for example, post-humanist philosophy. So she writes about this um, other worlds where half people, half animal live, half, half animals live and they they discuss with her, they teach her about the nature of the world. So I, I've, I discovered her, like I recently discovered more and more historical characters that are very exciting to me and, and whom I can see as my kind of uh, intellectual ancestors. Yeah, I believe uh, that we have to um, forge uh, artifacts and uh, we have to use uh, fiction and um, speculative and creative tools to kind of counter narrate history. So I hope to be doing this uh, with my work. And I think this is also the, the liberty of, of me as an artist to, to use history uh, as a material, let's say, so to talk about it and with it, but not reproduce it in the same way as it is being, uh, you know, constructed by the established academic discourse.